What a year 2020 has been. On top of the day job, I've had 33 conversations in eight months for my podcast, Island Influencers. Some of those months, we were in lockdown and coping with the unknown, a global pandemic. And I don't even want to say the name of it, but I will, COVID-19. I'm so thankful for the internet and the Isle of Man community. Many of us have found ourselves far from family and friends with planned trips and holidays cancelled month after month. And although Zoom and Teams doesn't really replace the closeness of being together, I mean, how could it? It has been a total saviour for most. However, I will admit to having become far too comfortable with just dressing properly from the waist up during our lockdown and being able to mute someone occasionally. So I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to look back at the lessons that I've learned over that time from some of the fascinating people I've had the privilege to interview. I wasn't too sure what to expect when I set out on this podcast journey. I knew it would aim to talk to lots of people about all aspects of their life and people who I admire and to find out how great it is living on the Isle of Man from their perspective. And it certainly is true that I've chatted to a diverse group of people, all passionate about what they do and why they do it. As I look back at all the conversations, a number of themes do pop up that are central to many of my conversations. Of course, we couldn't ignore COVID-19 and its impact. And each guest has very different backgrounds. Some are entrepreneurs, some are community leaders, some are successful business owners, and all with so many different memories of money growing up. And also what moment of fate took them on a different path, whilst also not forgetting our planet, climate change and the importance of the stars. We've covered so much and they took me with them on their unique and fascinating stories. Here it goes. Welcome to Island Influencers, where we share stories of successful business owners, experienced professionals, entrepreneurs and community leaders based or with influence in the Isle of Man. This podcast is brought to you by Thornton Chartered Financial Planners, because great financial planning has the power to change your life. Now here's your host, Chartered Financial Planner, Sharon Sutton. We've all got a personal story that's got us to where we are today. And I wanted to take this opportunity to share some insightful moments from my island influencers' stories. COVID-19 has had such a huge, huge impact on the Isle of Man, its businesses and its people, not forgetting our mental health. Charities started collaborating where they never have done before and the community started coming together to help each other. This could be a podcast in itself and all of my guests have had their unique story to tell. So do listen to Ireland Influencers podcast series in full if you can. I have to start, though, with Rachel Glover, who's an experienced molecular and computational biologist. Rachel has been instrumental in the setting up and running of the Isle of Man COVID-19 test facility, playing a vital part in monitoring and combating the virus. Rachel has also been running her own business throughout. 20 minutes later, I was stood in the microbiology department of the hospital looking at machine and mentally ticking off all the things that we would need to do to get it commissioned. It was exactly the same model that the company who makes them had told me the week before they were in short supply because Public Health England were buying them all up. Yeah. Um, and it was just a real stroke of luck that it happened to be sitting there. Didn't you um, find another one as well? Was it two? It did, yeah. yeah. I managed to find one secondhand in the Netherlands right. that I managed to order before it all kicked off really oh, okay. so I've got a machine I've got that machine in my lab it, it taxa as a backup to the hospital but also as a um, doubling of capacity should we need, should it. need it yeah it's one of those great things that the Isle of Man we're so small um that's very similar to to business so if you think of um a huge business that has large departments different arms in different countries they'd be very slow to react because lots of people who don't know each other have to try and work together to find solutions that work across multiple places with multiple different logistical challenges. On the Isle of Man, I would say that everybody who's involved in testing knows each other and can get them on the end of the phone and a solution can be worked out really, really quickly. So for example, um, to heap a bit of praise on the the microbiology team at the hospital, um, last Saturday when we detected the first case coming back in yeah um within two minutes of me having seen the data and gone oh crap there's a positive there I'm on the phone to Rebecca Shields who's the chief microbiologist in the path lab going look I think we've got one um she's then onto the phone to get it repeated on the rapid machine um twice in fact two different rapid machines to confirm the results because wow. of course it was a big result 
coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, us pulling the panic button and saying, hey, we've got a positive case on the Isle of Man um, after, I think it was 100 and, 100 and something days, we want to be absolutely sure that we're definitely not going to be calling a false positive result. So you check mm. it, a false positive result is never reproducible. So we tested that particular sample multiple times with multiple different methods. And then that was sent on to the medics who then, you know, you know, the medical biologist and the head of the bath lab and up through the contact tracing chain. And it's this very small but rapidly moving system. So I believe it was in the, the hands of the ministers within an hour or two of us actually calling that result. So wow. the fact that that is a small team that seems to work very, very well, I think is a real advantage to the Isle of Man. Yeah. There's a tale of devotion, isn't it, to the job and to the people of the Isle of Man, that everybody is prepared to drop yeah. everything on a Saturday night and go do that. So. Yeah, and um, it's one of those things, and I think that, you know, just like a small company um, that can move quickly and be pretty agile, yeah, the Isle of Man is like that. You know, the people who are in those positions to, to get stuff done know who those people are and can move quickly Good. Um, whereas yeah. compared to the UK it's it's no, it's, no that's it's very scary. clear talking with Richard Reed was like a therapy session and really demonstrated the importance of all of us prioritizing our mental health I'm a firm believer that even if you don't think you've got deep-rooted pathological issues that everybody can benefit from from actually having a better understanding of how their brain works and having very practical skills to be able to maximize their potential in life and I think most of us sadly we don't do that because we don't understand these fundamentals that actually really we should be taught in school. Chris Souter of Clothes Shop The Noble Souter said the coronavirus lockdown forced us to hit the reset button on our business. We've had to think outside the box to overcome the new obstacles that we are facing. Just talking about quotes right here. Absolute cracker. See, see, bringing it back to COVID-19 and what's happened. Theodore Roosevelt said, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. That's and right. I think yeah, that is, is unbelievable, is isn't yeah, it? That's a great saying. That like imagine absolutely. if you were to sail along on a flat calm your whole life and then this big wave comes at you, you wouldn't know what to do. No, if, you you're, if you're a deep sea sailor and you're hitting waves left, right and centre, it's just another wave that's come along. It's you a just great quote for the Isle of Man government to... Uh, to take to heart, isn't it? <laughs> it really? is. You know, this is this is exactly what, what what they were sent put in place to do. We've just hit that reset button back to zero, and it's now thinking of all the different marketing ideas and how we can overcome all the different issues that are coming at us. And again, same on the Isle of Man. I, mm. Mark's actually got a, probably a tougher job because again, you guys have locked down and ring fenced the um, the island. Mark's customer base has now got like less than half quartered because obviously you don't have all the people coming on off island and we would have got a great trade in Isle of Man off people coming on off island. Yeah, I'm sure. Mark now doesn't have that. So he's trying to think outside the box and make it work with such a small, finite number of people. And from Miles Pettit and Pippa Pettit of Noah Bakehouse. It's scary, isn't it? Because you, you work so hard to build a business that you, you want to build and, and get it to a point and move on this path that was going really well but then obviously something like in a world event like that happens and it's very scary to suddenly see what you've done being put on hold mm. or taken away and and all of a sudden you're responsible for 60 members of staff that you still need to support and make sure that they're going to do okay and and that's worrying and but it wasn't just worrying for us it was worrying for everybody everywhere mm. you know and I think you know, what we were very fortunate was is that we're on the Isle of Man and that we got up and running a lot quicker than mm-hmm. most, that we have such a loyal customer base that they kept us going. You know, they bought those pastries and bought those donuts, bought yeah. that bread, bought that coffee. And the order sizes, you yeah, know we they weren't just buying for yeah. them. Yes. They were buying yeah. way too much yeah. to yeah. support us, which is great. It was lovely. Jana Hosthouse, Managing Director of Robinson's Isle of Man, explains in more detail. It's fight for survival, isn't it? You know, you can't just sit and do nothing. A couple of the girls said, but mental health wise, it helped them to come to work every day and have a structure in place. They felt safe. They were interacting with people and they just carried on working and they were happy with that. They'd go home as normal. During lockdown, 
there was no kind of boundaries at home uh, that if I was working in my office at home and the kids wanted my attention as such it was it's very hard to switch off and you know segregate work to home life in theory we would have probably had about 80 people we'd have had to have just laid off straight away when the hospitality sector was shut down so we decided you know let's launch some kind of care package initially which was for people who had to isolate the elderly and um, people who, who didn't have family to maybe shop for them yeah. and get a very quick model out there onto the website which is what we did and that took off fantastically straight away and it was doing probably about three thousand deliveries a week to people's homes and then quite quickly we just decided to open up our full catering website to the public yeah and set up home deliveries yeah which then just yeah snowballed snowballed and you know people might see it as oh all the retailers and this industry did really well well actually we didn't no. you, you know your overheads go up your yes. costs go up don't they but yeah you just had to keep people in jobs but also it was the worry of keeping everyone safe as well sarah gartland from fallen natural health center spoke honestly from her personal perspective i've learned it's all right to slow down because that's not me as you know usually i'm a everywhere at a million miles an hour mm-hmm. um and it's made me realize and you'll love this one that um you should probably have some savings in this world mm. yeah funny that sharon shouted at me for that for years and i've gone yeah no because i can earn so it's fine this has made me realize saving might might not be a bad plan huh <laughs> who knew <laughs> Andy Cooper, in episode 12, makes a valid point that it's important to know when to stop working remotely as teams will appreciate working together more after this pandemic. I'm sure there are many teams out there who are missing the face-to-face team dynamics. I know we were. And Jill Marples agrees that working from home is okay, but maybe some of that innovation and the spark that you get through talking to other people is important to all of us. Jackie Brideson talks passionately about how they help their members who were stuck at home without internet access. Our staff spent a week to two weeks ringing every single one of our 500 members and saying to them, what support mechanism have you got? What help have you got in terms of deliveries? Have you got access to the internet? Because so so much of the government stuff was on the internet. So much of the buying stuff was on the internet. And when we did a a straw poll, 75% of our members didn't have access to data. So So all those messages were going out Mm. and a lot of them, crucial people didn't know how to do stuff no so what we did was we took over the roles of getting delivery company numbers we did um i mean we ended up doing things where people's washing machines are broken we sorted out getting a new washing machine or if they usually used a laundrette and went to it then getting laundry deliveries and there was all that sort of stuff that you don't really think about and you know if people have got families and families were obviously stepping up to the plate and it was fantastic yeah there were volunteer groups everywhere helping out that was amazing i think this job gives me the most sort of satisfaction in terms of you can see the benefits of what we do i think it's a very difficult charity to understand if you're not within it um covid's made a difference i think people are starting to get it now because people understand what loneliness and isolation is about yeah so to see the difference in people and to receive letters to say this is the difference you've made to me is a massive thing everyone has a story this is true for all of us we all have a personal story that has got us to where we are today other than covid19 have you had a life-changing moment In 2010, Connor Cummins crashed his motorbike at the Isle of Man TT, suffering horrendous injuries, and in rehab, he developed a love of coffee, and from that moment, he had to think differently, and his life changed forever. Well, yeah, Yeah. the horrendous injuries I've I've had in my my big smash. Yeah, they're well documented on your Wikipedia page, if anybody wants to look (laughs) them up, just saying. Yeah, Yeah, but that, that there in itself provided me the motivation to... It just made me think a little bit differently, um, and that's when my business side yeah. of me was 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 started. Really, Jill Marples initially went to college to learn to be a beautician, but it wasn't quite as glamorous as she thought it would be. Jill says she drifted into insurance and then on to where she is today, a director and head of Integra Life International Limited. And Jill offers some wise advice to aspire to something as great, but it doesn't always end up being where you'll end up. So I did my A-levels, I did my O-levels as they were then, I did yes. my A-levels and then headed off to Chichester to do beauty therapy. Right. And actually found out to my disappointment it wasn't quite what I thought it would be. Why not? 
It wasn't as glamorous. It's like lots of things in life. You tend to think that looks glamorous from the outside, and when you actually get into the inside, it's not as glamorous as you think it's going to be. Things like um, some of the body treatments, the kind of massage, facials, things like that, I, I enjoyed. But the most in-demand treatments, and when you're a newly qualified beauty therapist, is um, waxing people's legs and doing manicures. So that was not really for me, I decided, in the end. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had a real life plan. I've tended to go where life kind of nudges you as opposed to thinking this is where I want to get to. Few of my guests talk about how an inspiring teacher or studying can set you on a different path. Here are snippets of Dawn Jones, Gail Yole and Dr. Brisha Madrill stories. I think it was the sort of re- reaction to the, the breakup of a marriage, which was a particularly difficult breakup. Yeah. But I blossomed when I went to college because I think I had those inspiring teachers. One of the modules within that um, qualification was a personnel management module as it was called then yeah and I thought that was so interesting yeah it was so varied um, and I really thoroughly enjoyed doing that module and even before I'd finished that qualification I knew that I wanted to go on and right. study more in, in the sort of personnel HR management yeah. area. Well, I was always interested in music and languages at school um, and it just happened to be that my favourite French teacher left so I did German A-level instead of um, French and I did music as well and I wanted to do just music first of all at uni um, and you have to do an an extra subject in your first year so I did German, I liked that so much I turned it into a dual honours degree which meant I got a year in Germany as well. Moving to a different country can definitely change your life. Here's Chris Callow in episode 23. But after 20 years at the bar, somebody had asked me what my exit strategy was. And I'd I'd never had much of a... uh, I was never one for looking forward. But also the pressures of of being in legal practice um, were quite high. And uh, I think possibly beginning to have an effect on my health. So I decided to leave. Yeah. without a clear plan what to do next. And that's really what led to uh, to the move to France yeah. because uh, as a family, we'd spent a lot of time in France. We'd done a lot of skiing. I was out skiing with some friends uh, at the beginning of the year and an agent we're friendly with said a chalet had come up and would I be interested? So I had a hasty conversation with Vanessa. Yes. And um, yeah, we thought that might be a way forward. So the end result was we uh, we took off to France. Um, again, no clear plan as to where that was to lead, but we ended up spending seven years in the French Alps. Lovely. For David Roberts, it was a business idea that evolved and grew. Well, one of the uh, things that Christine and I did in our very early years on the Isle of Man, we set up a charity. Initially, it was called Care in Douglas, mm. and we copied an idea from um, a town in the UK who'd set up a care charity. It was a good neighbour scheme. We would do for anybody um, who hadn't got a good neighbour what a good neighbour would normally do for them. Um, we'd do shopping, we'd do uh, emergency babysitting, we do transport to hospitals. It gradually developed into a service now, which still exists, uh, but its prime function now is transport. This is what people need. And what we do is we pick people up, we'll put them in a wheelchair if they need it, take them to wherever they're going, we'll sit with them, wait with them, um, and then take them home again afterwards. Take Andy Cooper, episode 12. His life has taken many paths. He's originally from the northeast of England and moved to the Isle of Man, having been a general brand manager for Whitbread. But he's glad he's not doing that anymore. Sometime later, he found himself in the role as general secretary of the Manx National Farmers Union, which may seem a strange step, but everything happens for a reason. And this impassioned individual is now making a positive change within the farming community here on the Isle of Man. Rebecca George, Chief Executive Officer of the Isle of Man Chamber of Commerce, Bex met the guy who became her husband on a blind date in London. She told me, I'm a true believer that things happen for a reason. I just feel very privileged to be in a position where I can make a difference. And I couldn't have put it better myself. Thank you for listening to Island Influencers. If you'd like to listen to any of the full episodes, then please do visit www.thauntonfs.com forward slash podcasts or search for Island Influencers in your favourite podcast player. And if you would like to be a guest, of course, do contact me. 
We're recording now for series 2021. And if you've enjoyed this episode, then please do write a review on iTunes, as it does help more people like you find us. Thanks very much. Thank you for listening to this episode of Island Influencers from Thornton Chartered Financial Planners. To find out more and for useful links, visit thorntonfs.com slash podcasts.